Oil interests and tension between the Western world and the Soviet Union caused communist leaders in Iran to be overthrown and led to an Islamic revolution, which impaired the country's ability to trade internationally. Context of Imperialism in Iran To understand how Iran was affected by the Cold War, it is important to understand the context of the situation. In 1935, England invaded Iran and established an indirect imperial control over Iran. American oil companies and British Petroleum, an English gasoline company, contracted a deal with Reza Shah Pahlavi, the ruler of Iran at the time, where the United States, England, and Iran would share oil amongst themselves. In exchange, the Americans and British would provide the resources to erect the oil wells. England was doing this throughout the Middle East in what is known as the Mandate System. Coup d'état Later in 1951, Mossadegh was democratically elected as the Prime Minister of Iran. Mossadegh was a communist who closely affiliated with the Soviet Union. He wanted to nationalize the oil wells that the British, thereby breaking the oil contract made with Reza Shah Pahlavi. The United States responded by having the CIA institute a coup d'etat against Mossadegh, and they put in his place Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi, Reza Shah's son. The US did this for two reasons. The first is that the US was engaged in a cold war. The American strategy to combat the Soviet Union during the Truman administration was the containment policy. The containment policy was designed to prevent the Soviet Union from expanding its communist sphere of influence into other countries. Removing Mossadegh would impede the USSR from expanding its influence. The second reason for the coup was for the US and Britain to continue profiting off of the oil contract with Iran. Shah Pahlavi Era Mohammad Reza Shah ushered in an economic prosperity for Iran during the White Revolution in the 1960s. The White Revolution included massive reforms to westernize Iran with the goal to develop the middle class. The Shah invested more money into industry and education. Oil revenue also rose from $555 million in 1964 to $20 billion in 1976. More money, which the Shah used to invest in his white revolution policies. The result was economic growth and a rising middle class. However, some of the Iranian populace was upset with the Shah's autocratic rule. For example, the Shah instituted the Savak, a secret police which tortured many political dissidents. Islamic Revolution One of the main critics of the Shah's White Revolution was Ayatollah Khomeini, a Shiite. He disagreed with the rights women received, like the right to vote, and wanted Iran to stop selling oil to Israel. He claimed that the Western values that the Shah was trying to impose on Iran contradicted traditional Islamic teaching. Initially, the people who started the Iranian Revolution were dissatisfied with the Shah's secret police and his authoritarian rule. The U.S. was dissatisfied with the Shah because he was a king. The U.S. also disliked how the Shah, who was the president of OPEC in the late 1960s and 1970s, raised oil prices. The Shah and the other OPEC countries raised oil prices to gain leverage over Israel and the West after Egypt, Syria, and Iraq failed to defeat Israel in the Yom Kippur War. Oil interests were a strong factor in the U.S. not supporting the Shah and not intervening during the revolution. Ayatollah Khomeini won the revolution and instituted a theocratic system of governance. Although there were some elections allowed in Iran, the Ayatollah has the ultimate power. Sanctions As a result of the hostage crisis in 1979, where 52 American diplomats were held hostage by Iranian revolutionaries for 444 days, 
the U.S. government froze a total of 12 billion in assets of the Iranian government in U.S. overseas banks. This freeze was expanded to a full trade embargo until an accord was signed with Iran in 1981. Since then, more and more sanctions were imposed on Iran. The Iranian Revolution gave power to many Islamic fundamentalists who, since the 1990s, have been pursuing nuclear weapons. Iranian leaders constantly threatened the U.S. and Israel with their weapons. Because of this nuclear program, the U.N. has instituted sanctions on Iran. Since Iran has restricted access to the global marketplace due to the rhetoric and policies of its fundamentalist leaders, its economy is suffering as well. Iran's economy has an inflation rate of 30% today.